from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every single day. I started to think to myself, hang on a second, this isn't right either. Now, I'm making more money, but I'm working even more, right? There's got to be a smarter way of making money where you don't have to put all those crazy hours in. So, what happened is I met uh, a friend of mine who's now my business partner, and he's my brother. He's my brother from another mother. He's my brother, right? And we started to work together. We started to say, he said to me, look, I'm going to this seminar. It's going to teach me about financial markets trading, and I really want to get into that. And it's something that I'd looked into in the past as well. It wasn't something I wanted to do straight away, but he said, come on along. Now, the thing is, he's a very forgetful guy. So I thought, okay, he's booked the ticket for me, but he's going to forget about it. So I, and I was busy with my video production business, and he said, do you know what? I've booked it for you already. I said, no problem. And I knew that he was going to forget, because he's a forgetful guy. On the day of the seminar, he calls me, right? And he says, hey, you remember the seminar? I booked it for you. You're not going to miss it, right? And I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness me. He remembered, I have to go. We went along to this seminar on how to <coughs> trade financial markets. And what happened is it's an incredible presentation. And it actually opened my eyes up to a way of making money with just 15 minutes of work a day. And it's the same presentation that now, six years later, I'm going to deliver to you. Okay, so just give you a little bit of background. So after I went to that presentation, I started working for that business, I worked on a private trading floor. I actually coached uh, and mentored well over 2,500 people, right? I learned how to trade the financial markets. Those guys put me onto a private trading floor. They gave me a trading account. I started to trade company money. I started to train their clients. And I started to make good money trading financial markets. I remember my first ever trade was on a stock called Agreco. And I sold the stock, and I held it for about 10 days, and I made 75 pounds. And I was like, yes! 75 pounds, right? For my first ever trade. I was so happy. And it just opened me up to what was possible because I was trading with 1,260 pounds. And if I were trading with 12,600 pounds, that would have been 750 pounds. 7,500 pounds. 75,000 pounds. On one trade, with 15 minutes of work a day. And today, that's what I do professionally. I do that professionally, and I train people how to do it as well. So now we have a business called Master the Markets, Master the Markets is a training company. We train people how to trade financial markets. And we do this ourselves professionally. We said, when we left that private trading floor, we said, we made a very clear statement. We don't want to be people that just talk and show people and teach people. We want to walk the talk. Every single trade I take is published live on a trade journal. Everyone can see it. My clients can take the same trades that I take. They can make money at the same time that I do. That's what I do. So, my, the reason that I do this, the reason that I love trading financial markets, and I want to free up my time and make a good amount of money is why? It's because I want to train martial arts. I love working with children. I'm, um, a first, I'm a second degree black belt now, actually, in a martial art called Choi Kwando. And my goal, actually, is to incorporate a program called Satya Sai Education in Human Values into the martial art. Okay? So the five human values being love, peace, truth, right conduct, non-violence. I want to integrate that into the martial art and teach students all over the world, thereby eliminating bullying. Right? That's the reason that I live. It's my purpose. It's what I want to do. It's what drives me. It's what makes me get up in the morning and, and teach people how to trade and trade myself. Okay? So what you need to find is what your vision is and then find a method of getting yourself there. You've already seen a really great presentation on uh, network marketing. Now, we'll show you a presentation on financial trading. The idea is you should choose. These are all methods in which you can break what's called the time and money link, which I'm going to explain in a little detail in a bit about right now. But these are all methods. So you need to see which one resonates with you, then you can drive forward. But the problem is 95% of people don't choose a method and they stay locked 
in the time and money window. For their whole lives, up until they reach the grave, and then their song goes with them. And that's sad. And if you want proof of that, just look around. So let me give you a little bit of background on what we've done. In May this year, we hosted the Elite Traders Conference. It's an annual event. Every single year, we bring on a professional trader. We bring them to the UK. Uh, we flew this gentleman in. He's from Dallas, Texas. And he delivered a presentation on uh, advanced financial markets trading. And that was for our client just there, the 25th of May. Just recently, about a month ago, on the 21st of September, we held a, um, a presentation on breaking the time and money link where we actually showed people six different ways in which they can break the time and money link so they can get uh, more money, so they can get money working for them as opposed to them working for money. So on that day, I delivered a presentation on financial markets trading much similar to the one you're gonna see today. So what is this time and money link? I keep talking about it. I wanna give you a little bit of an understanding. Okay. Who here has a part-time job by show of hands? Okay. Part time job, good. So here's, here's the idea of the time and money link. So this gentleman, Phil Smith, he goes to work. He works from nine through till five. He has an income. He earns 2,600 a month. He also has expenses. So he has some savings at the end of the month. Then he goes back the following month and he does it all over again. Can anyone resonate with this? Do people know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this, right? So what's happening is he's sacrificing a whole bunch of time. His working time increases. Because he's working and he's putting time in, the amount of money he makes is going up as well. But his free time is next to nothing. This gentleman trades. He has a passive income or he does network marketing or he does internet marketing. He has a method. He uses that method and money works for him, okay? That means that the amount of working time he puts in can be, what I do is financial markets trading, I take 15 minutes a day, trade in the evening from 9 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. Working time, very little, but the amount of money you make goes up and your free time goes up. Why is that? It's because if I'm trading with, as I told you, 1,260 pounds and I made 75, if I'm trading that same 15 minutes in the evening with 12,600 pounds, now I've made 750 pounds, but am I putting any more time into what I'm doing? Am I putting any more time in? No. no. So my working time is less, the amount of money I make is more, and the free time I have increases. Does this concept make sense to everyone? <laughs> Say yes. 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 Perfect. You know, this presentation is going to be totally different, so in a minute I'm going to get you up and doing some funky things, and you guys are going to be like, what the hell is this guy doing, right? So my apologies for that, it's just to keep your attention in the room. So I'm going to talk a little bit about FX trading now, and what it is, and the specifics behind it, so you really get a good grounding, and a good strong understanding. Before I do that, what I need you to do is just get up, find five people, right? Give them a high five, and tell them, I'm here to master the markets. Like this, I'm going to give you a demo. I'm here to master the markets. Well, five people, get up, go, do it now. Go. Real quick, let's go. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, some of you didn't know it, that's all right. Okay. We should make we you get up and do it. All right, no problem. All right, here we go. So now what I want to teach you now is a little bit about the, see, the reason we do this and the reason that it's see the reason that it's important to do something like this is what? Do you know what? It keeps the energy levels up. It keeps the emotions up. See, emotion, emotion is energy in motion. If you keep that energy in motion at a good rate and it's constant and you're doing things, getting up and you're interacting, your memory retention goes up. I'm going to show you a technique that's going to make you between 600 and 1,000 pounds a day. I want you to remember it all. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's why I'm asking you to do such things. Okay. So what is FX trading? Basically, FX trading or Forex trading or foreign exchange trading is the trading of physical currency. Okay. We don't trade physical currency. We do it over an internet platform and we don't need any physical currency. It's pretty cool. The great thing about this market is it's the only market in the world 
that is a trillion dollar market. Three trillion dollars are traded every day. Does everyone know how much a trillion is? A thousand billion. Does everyone know how much a billion is? A thousand million. Okay, three trillion dollars are traded a day in this market. It is the biggest market in the world. How do we trade it? Okay, we have some mechanics. I'm gonna show you some graphs now. And they're gonna, you're going to really understand and get a learning for how we look at graphs and how we analyze them. These are bars. We call these OHLC bars. The O stands for? Opportunity. Almost. It is an opportunity. Very good. It's over here, though. O stands for? Open. Open. Okay. L stands for? Okay, OH. So H stands for? High. Okay. And C stands for? Close. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to give you an example of what I look at. So basically, we look at these every single day. We look at these because they plot price over a period of time. Let's say that this is one day. I'll take an example of a sweet shop, okay? Who here likes sweets, just out of interest? Yeah, like sweets, yeah? Okay. Um, so here's a sweet shop, right? Sweet shop, let's say, um, I need a volunteer now. I'm going to pick, uh, okay, this young lady at the back. What's your name? Shelby. Shelby. Shawby, okay, Shawby has a sweet shop, okay? It's called Shawby Sweets, nice, right? SS, right? So he, it starts in the morning with, let's say, 300 pounds in the till. Everyone understand that? It starts in the morning with 300, she opens the shop at nine o'clock. 300 pounds. What happens is we get, um, Mr. Slava comes into the shop and he says, look, I bought some sweets yesterday from Shawby and I didn't like them very much and I, I need to get a refund, right? Because I bought too many. So he wants a refund and she has to lose 50 pounds from her till. So what happens is her till goes down to how much? 250. 250. Then what happens is we get a big buyer coming into the market. What's your name, sir? Yeah. Sajja. Sajja comes in, he's a cash and carry buyer. Yeah, cash and carry buyer, he wants to buy in bulk. He buys three grand worth of sweets. Buys three grand worth of sweets. How much has the till got in it now? 3,250, 3, exactly. And then what happens is someone else comes in, they get a little refund for about 100 pounds, and then the shop closes. Shop closes with 3,150. This is basically an OHLC bar of Shawby Sweet Shop over that period of time. Does that make sense? Yes? yes? So we look at these in terms of currency fluctuations. We look at these in terms of currency fluctuations. And every single day, we plot currency fluctuations according to these bars. So we get green bars, we get red bars. We get, if the open price is lower than the closed price, it's a green bar. When the closed price is lower here, then open, it's a red bar. That's pretty much it. So when we're looking at graphs, that's what we're looking at. It plots the currency, it plots the currency price fluctuations. If you get lots of green bars coming in, it means the currency is increasing in value. Lots of red bars means currency is decreasing. decreasing in value. So let's take, I want to just give you an example of an understanding of how we, the unit that we use, right? Now the unit that we use to um, buy and sell things here from shops and things like that is what? What's the unit? What's the currency? Pounds. And what, what is that unit measured in? What's the smallest? Uh, one? What? Pence, right? One penny. One penny is the smallest increment. So let's say you wanted to buy a book, it's 30 pounds, 97 pence. What is the smallest increment that book can go up by? One pence, right? So it could go up to 30 pounds, 98, as the gentleman said. 30 pounds, 98. If it goes up again, what's the minimum amount it can go up by? 99, right? So this is the smallest increment by which the book can move. In foreign exchange trading, in what I do, the smallest price increment is different. It's to four decimal places. So now, when the currency goes up, it goes up on the fourth decimal place. Now, if I start trading here at 128.72, and I put on 10 pounds per pip, 10 pounds per pip, as the currency starts to move up, I start to make money because I bought at 10 pounds per pip. Now 128.77, price has moved five pips. I've made 
How much have I made? 50. 50 pounds, right? Price goes up by 7 pips, I've made? 70. Price goes up by 8 pips, I've made? 50. Does this make sense to everyone? Right? Fourth decimal place. So we put on pounds per pip. Pounds per pip. That's the idea there. So the price keeps going up, so the um, currency starts to gain more, uh, more strength, and we bought at a lower price as we're incrementing, price is going up. So that's the idea there, that's what we're looking at. What I wanna do is very quickly just give you three key trader power tips. Three trader power tips, okay? They're gonna help you out with foreign exchange trading. So the first one is always wear a seatbelt. All right, always wear a seatbelt. Chief, before I give you three tips, I'm gonna give you one more example. So this graph just here, I showed you an example already. Now, let me give you one more thing here. Now, who here has been um, on holiday abroad somewhere? Some kind of holiday, yeah? Okay, brilliant. So when you went to, um, when you went on holiday, who put their hand up? Who put their hand up? Someone put their hand up for me. Where, where did you go last, sir? Me? Yeah? Uh, I'm in USA. USA, perfect example. Okay, so what's your name? Fahan. Fahan. Fahan went to USA. Okay, so he had pounds in the UK. He wanted to change them for dollars. This makes sense to everyone? <laughs> okay, so let me just give you an example of this in real life, okay? So let's say the current cable rate is 1.6330, I believe, at the moment. Okay, that's the current rate. Now let's say that Fahan went to Thomas Cook to go and change his currency, right? Everyone heard of Thomas Cook? Yes. Yeah. So he went to Thomas Cook, and Thomas Cook, according to him, the rate is 1.63. That means for every pound, he's going to get $1.63. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone say yes. yes! Yes! Perfect. So then I know, right? Otherwise, you may not be making sense. Then I'm just talking about self, and then I don't even talk to myself unless I'm going mad, and you know, I'm not going mad. Right. So here's the thing 1.63. But Fahan got there at 5.30 p.m., they closed at 5. Right? He had a problem. He had to go back the next day. When he went back the next day, the rate was 1.64. As I said, in foreign exchange, we look at two decimal places. If we trade that long, we've made 400, sorry, we've made 100 pips. 100 pips overnight is a normal movement. At 10 pounds per pip, how much have you made? Anyone with some basic maths? How much have you made? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Does this make sense to everyone how this works? This is, without a doubt, the most phenomenal way of making money in existence. Why? Because of its scalability. As I said, it's a trillion dollar market. It is huge, right? 10 pounds per pip is a little fraction, a little fraction of the types of movements that take place. Is there a chance of pips going down? Of course there is, sir. And when that happens, you need to always trade with a seatbelt. Always wear a seatbelt. What does a seatbelt mean? <laughs> it means you use a stop loss. I'm really glad that you said that. What's your name? Jahid. Jahid. Jahid makes a phenomenal point. What happens if it goes against you? If it goes against you, the number one rule as a professional trader is that you manage your risk. Manage your risk. Everything else is secondary. The upside profits take care of themselves. You need to manage your risk. So now if you use a stop loss, it stops your loss. Now you define what your maximum loss is. So I can say, I would like to have a maximum loss of 100 pounds. 